Well, hello and welcome back to A Kooky Corner of YouTube. Today we're looking at braiding and the specific type of braiding. Uh, this is called Kumihimo and I do believe it's Japanese in origin. We will find out. Uh, this is a book I got probably last year. I'm thinking last year. And I did one thing out of it. I haven't really gotten back to it, but you know me, I circle back, I'm circling back. And just to show you one, the braid, <laughs> the singular braid that I made that has been working all year to hold my needles onto my scissors. Because if you're anything like me and you're doing some crochet or some knitting, <laughs> you can never find your needles. Well, I thought if I put them with the big scissors, then that's not going to be uh, a problem to find. And that is the braid that I made that I'm going to show you today. It's really simple. Um, I think it's just two colours in it. And I did this with embroidery. For, oh, was it embroidery? It's embroidery cotton, I think it was. Uh, but yeah, let's have a little look inside the book. This is by Helen Dayan. I do hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> and it's called Beautiful Braiding Made Easy. Um, I'd had the discs for years. The, the Kimihimo discs I got. Oh my gosh, um, so long ago. <laughs> I've had them for ages and ages and ages. Um, but I never got around to do anything with them. This is me. I buy the things, I see the things, I get all the things, and then <laughs> it gets stuck in a cupboard. Well, I've been through that cupboard. So let's have a little look inside the book. Nicely in this book, you get two of the discs. If you haven't got your own discs, you can actually cut these out and use them. So you, you can do it out of card. Um, and they have given you two templates there. So that one is for flat braiding. And that one is for the braiding I'm going to show you today. And these are the kinds of things you can do when you get proficient with your um, braiding disc. I am not proficient. <laughs> As I said, I've done one braid and we're going to attempt to do another one today so that I can show you what I'm doing. Um, so this book was first published in 2015 and no, sorry, it was first published in 2006, but was reprinted in 2016 or republished. So this is what you would traditionally have done your braiding on, which is quite unwieldy don't you say? I mean, if you want to take it on the train, you're going to get some looks, aren't you? <laughs> so this is what we use, um, which is, mine was by the Beadsmiths, Kumihimo de disc, and that's a Kumihimo plate. So we get two different kinds. Types of yarn or thread. Well, basically you can use cotton, silk or wool yarns, so knitting yarns are perfect for this, cotton yarns, uh, dyed yarns, so yeah, if you want to use your own dyed yarns, fabric, you can braid fabric, so if you cut that into strips, if you cut that into half inch strips, you can braid with that as well, very useful to know. And this is what I'm going to do today, which is the preparing to braid with the disc. So we'll be going back to that in a moment. So braiding, finishing off. I'm just going to flip through very briefly so that you can get an idea. Different kinds of braids, different patterns that you can achieve. Ideas. So you could make some kind of a bowl with this as well. Interesting. Um, hollow braid. Oh, that's very useful if you want to make a hollow braid and if you want to make a hollow braid with a cord i've got some cord that i wouldn't mind doing if you want to make cords for things or bag handles or anything it's really useful this i find lovely <laughs> look at this how beautiful are those braids they're just stunning and it's just with some simple moves so different ideas and the rest or the rest of it is mainly just kind of patterns how to do the different braids so that page there shows you number one page 15 so you get an idea of if you pick the braid you want to try 
then you go to this. Okay. And the rest is patterns. We've got some suppliers there. There's probably more different suppliers. If you search up Kumihimo discs, you will find a lot of different ones. So what I'm going to do now is set up my round desk because this is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to use, uh, Helen says she used the dots rather than the numbers for this very simple braid that we're going to make. So I'm going to get my threads out. Let's have a go. So I've decided I want to make um, an attachment with mine um, or put my attachment on with mine. So the next thing I need to do is to choose my threads. I'm going to choose two very simple threads. <clears throat> These are ones I got off Amazon, I think. They're in a pack of is it nine, weirdly. <laughs> um, different colours, kind of so that I can see the difference in the in the braid, it, you know, you need like two different colours. You could do it all in one colour, but you're not going to see the effect like this if you just do it in one colour. So what I need to do now is to cut off two one metre lengths from that and two one metre lengths from that. So I'm going to go and do that off camera because I need to measure it and I'll be back. So I've cut two one metre lengths out of each of my two threads. That means I had four pieces all together. And what I need to do then is to half it. So I've done it in half and I've put a holding thread on the bottom and also my fastening, hoping this is going to work. I can't even remember how I did the last one, but I'm going to go with this. Um, so I should have equal numbers and I should have indeed eight threads in total. Right, so to arrange the threads on the disc, pass the knit, knit, pass the knot or the fixing thread through the hole in the middle. So I'm going to do that now. And I do know the importance of keeping the, um, the bit in the middle, in the middle. <laughs> right, so we're looking at our dots here. Hold the knot firmly with the left hand below the discs. Okay, so that's there. And arrange as shown with the right hand either side of the dots. Okay. So, I need to go two to the top dot, she said, hopefully. And two to the bottom dot and I'm keeping those the same colour I think and then I need to go two to the east dot and can arrange the middle bit in a, in a second and two to the west dot <laughs> like so and then we have to arrange it so I have to put that in the center so I pull that to the center it should be quite tight I do believe so I have to go like that like that till it's centered so I've got my colors arranged in groups like two of the dark blue two of the mint to dark blue to mint now how we do this let me move the book out of the way see if i can remember and it says to look for the dots and ignore the numbers so that's what we've done make sure the threads are really in the notches yes they are in nice and tightly Got all my threads dangling <laughs> and I've got my center holding thread and my little doodad key ring watch me call it in the middle right this time we'll do it top right to bottom right bottom left to top left going along a notch 
turn left. So top right to bottom right, go into that notch there, bottom right to bottom left to top left, making sure it's centered, which it is, turn left. <laughs> Top right to bottom right, bottom left to top left. So you just go into the next one along, making sure it's centered, turn left. This gets easier as you go along, by the way, as you start to form the braid. Top right to bottom right, top left, sorry, bottom left to top left making sure it's centered, turn left, top right to bottom right, bottom left to top left, center it up, turn left. <laughs> so you take a quarter turn to the left, so Top right, bottom left, top left, turn left. And we're cooking with gas. So it's right, left, center, 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 center. And left, right, left, and left, right, left, and left. And you just keep going, so it's right, left, and left. <laughs> really simple, right, left. Making sure it's centered. Oh my gosh. Come on, do a center. It's just easy to do. And then left. Right, top, right, bottom, bottom, left, right, top, left. Okay, then. Yes, it is. Left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. <laughs> I think you're getting the pattern here, right, right, left, <laughs> left. So if you say to yourself, right, left, straighten, straighten, and left, then we're going to start to see a braid coming through the bottom. Um, I have been wondering about if I stopped, how do I know where I am? Well, you can look at the, the position of the threads. So that's one way to do it. So you can look, the threads that were on the top would have been your last move. So that would have been that one. Uh, but the one way that I have seen people do this is instead of completing a move, they'll go down with that one and leave it halfway through so that you know that the next one is going to be a left to left, if you see what I mean. Because you've only got one there, so you know that that's where you left off, left. <laughs> Lots of lefts and rights in here. But that's one way to um, remember where you need to be. There we go. Right. Left. Straighten it. 
think if I hold the bottom, that might hold it straight, but we'll carry on and left. Right. Left. Left. Right. Left. Come on, stay in the centre. <laughs> and left. Right, left, and left. I'm just going to continue with this until I've got a bit of a length to show you. So, um, yeah, I'll be back in a tick. Okay, so I've had a lovely time <laughs> so far um, making my braid. You can see that I've stopped at this point, so I will know that the next one I need to do is that one there. So that's a really good tip to halfway do uh, a move, so to speak. It does become easier as you do it. It starts to become muscle memory like anything else. A repetitive thing will get easier as you do it. So you can go a lot quicker than I did when I was starting. But let's turn, let's turn it over and we can have a little look at the braid that's forming. Look at that. It's very strong as well. It's very strong braiding. And I've taken out the holding stitch because it, it wasn't really needed anymore. And uh, yeah, it's, it's coming along quite nicely. So I'll have another little um, attachment braid that I can attach onto something. I maybe could put something on the other end, like a, a key. So it could be a key ring, but who knows? So I'm going to continue with this and, um, and then I'll show you what it's like when I need to take it off. Okay, so I have finished my braid. I've taken it off and fastened the base of it. Uh, there is an instruction on how to finish off in the book as well. So basically you put a loop of thread you, you cut a loop thread about six inches, you make it into a loop, fold it in half, wrap one of the braid ends around it about five or six times, and then you pull it through, basically. And that finishes off your braid. And this is what we got. Lovely, very strong braid, which I can probably put a key on or something to attach somewhere or it could have anything on it you could you could embed something in it you could even probably make it into a bracelet i would say it fits around there and also i just discovered these beads will probably slot on it as well so let's have a little look Helps if you put them all together, I suppose. I'm sure these will fit on. <laughs> Struggling to get the ends together. Let's go through. There we go. Yeah. So you could make a bracelet with some of these lovely beads on it as well. So that's really a nice way to spend a couple of hours to get yourself a braid now. What we did was we cut a metre of each and folded it in half, so it would have been 50 centimetres. So the finished braid from that amount is about 20, 20 centimetres. So there you go, it's pretty good. Very, very enjoyable to make as well. And it's something, once you've got into the, the way of doing it, to then you will be able to do it really quickly. So that's the most basic one in the book. And there are lots and lots of others like these that you can try. I want to try the cord wrap one. That sounds very good. It says here, the triangular braid. This is a little more complex and lots for the faint hearted. So I presume if you work your way through different patterns and things in the book, then you will get the hang of how it all goes together. It's a bit like any other craft that we do. So yeah, very much recommended. 
Um, I also want to have a go at making a flat braid at some point in time, which is what this one would be for. Uh, but really easy to make a simple braid like this. And curious to know what the cloth braiding would look like. That that it might be something that I try next as well to to braid with cloth to see how that looks. Anyway, that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed a little look into Kumihimo. And um, yeah, if you're interested, that's the book. As I said, it's by Search Press and it's by Helen Dayan. Beautiful braiding made easy. These I got online. I think these were from the Beadsmith. And well, it says the Beadsmith on them. I think they do sell them on Amazon as, as well. Uh, and then these just the findings were also from Amazon as well, if you wanted to get some of those. So there you go. Have a great day. I'll be back here again with something else. So bye for now.